this week, mountain scenery goes in and the first structures appear on the Cumberland and Ohio Valley Railroad. Welcome back everyone. It's been three weeks since my last vlog and today we're going to take a look at the completed west end of the town of Graves. Uh, even though it's been three weeks, really everything you see in this corner was accomplished the, in one week. School has started back so I have not really spent any time at all in the train building for the last couple of weeks but I did manage to get this corner done before things resumed with school. So we're going to take a little look at how this turned out. As you can see, we've got our first structures. Uh, in fact, I have built four for this corner in addition to the one that was on another little diorama that uh, I had built several years ago. And so we'll take a look at that, some of the details. Uh, but first, we'll take a look at the actual scenery that completed this mountainside. So I'm trying today to keep the camera on a tripod to keep it as still as possible. So I'm going to kind of set up a couple of different shots here to show you the different areas. So let me do that. We'll take a look at the rocks. So here we are at the uh, hillside and this was, this was a little bit of a challenge because I wanted to make sure that anything that I put on the hillside here uh, looked in scale with the buildings up here on the, the top. So, you know, typically uh, especially in Appalachian modeling, what people tend to do is make the puffball trees that everyone's familiar with. And, um, you know, if this was to, going to continue all the way up to, you know, up the side of the backdrop, I think that may have been okay. But the problem is having buildings up in here, and particularly ones that are uh, this one, this one especially being of what I would call contest quality, uh, it just, it would really look bad to have a bunch of puff balls or a bunch of clump foliage uh, clusters from Woodland Scenics in front of it. Um, so I needed something that was going to, for one, not obstruct the view of these buildings up here, and two, would look in scale with the actual height of the building. So in the end, I decided to more concentrate on the rock castings and, and carved rocks and just use some very, very understated vegetation to fill in in between those. So basically all of these rocks down here toward the bottom, I hand carved all of those. In fact, this was a redo. I wasn't happy with the first attempt that I did. So I basically just recovered it with plaster and and started over and, and actually was really happy with the second go round. But this one and all of these up here are either uh, rock molds by Woodland Scenics or a company which is no longer around as far as I know that was AMI made a series of rock molds that I bought, gosh, I think back in the 80s that I still have. Um, and that basically created all of these. These are also rock castings down here, but filled all of those in. And before I set them, basically I covered this whole hillside with sculpt mold and you can see a little bit peeking out back here. So basically it's plaster, uh, cardboard webs, plaster cloth, sculpt mold, and then this is covered with dirt. And then I'm going to show you what I did to actually create this sort of almost like a kudzu sort of looking ground cover and I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see the texture of it a little bit better um, but it fills in around the rocks really well and then you'll notice there's also a little bit of fine leaf foliage that's in there as well uh, that I've used in other areas so far and I think it actually 
you know, it doesn't look heavily forested, uh, but like I said, I, for the reasons I gave earlier, I really didn't want this to be covered in thick, dense trees because what we're going to look at in just a second would just really be a shame to cover this up, um, including the backdrop. But even that shot right there um, at the top of the hill, and excuse my crude pointer here. Where is it? There it is. Um, right up in here is all static grass to blend it together. But I think it looks pretty good. I'm happy with it. Um, and let me just show you really quickly. Very, very simple. Uh, so simple that I'm almost embarrassed to demonstrate it for you. But uh, I'm going to show you how I actually achieved this look real quick. So these are the materials that I use to make the ground cover. We have uh, polyfiber from Woodland Scenics. It's also available from Scenic Express, and I've used both. Um, some maximum strength hairspray. And then we've got some different uh, textures and shades of ground foam. And this one, which is uh, Burnt Grass, Woodland Scenics, is by far my favorite color of all of their greens to work with. This one to me is just the most natural looking of all of them. It's not too bright, it's not too dark, it's just, as Goldilocks would say, it's just right. And probably on the MANG for sure, I would say almost the entire layout was covered with this one shade. Now I use different ones to do little highlights, but as as far as the base color goes, this is this is by far my go-to from Woodland Scenics. And then I also have, and it's labeled incorrectly here, so ignore that. But this is some fine yellow um, that's also from them. And this you'll see I use strictly for highlights. So let's see if we can make a little bit of uh, ground cover. All right, so let's make a little bit of ground cover. We're gonna start with our polyfiber and just pull a little, a little small pinch off of it. Doesn't look like much right now, but it's fixing to grow. So we're gonna take our piece and what we wanna do here is pull it very, very thin. You almost can't go too thin with this stuff. And if I were actually going to put this on the layout, I would have some idea of what shape I'm trying to make. In other words, if I'm going between two rock castings, I may say, well, I need it to kind of taper up this way or be a little wider down at this end or whatever. So try to pre-shape it as much as possible so it just is a nice fit. But for this, we're not worried about any particular shape, so that'll work for us for right now. And first thing we do to it is coat it with hairspray. And our first application of ground foam is going to be the fine turf. So with this, I'm not trying to cover this entire thing. Um, it would defeat the whole purpose of, of stretching it out so thin. I just barely want to sprinkle this on very lightly. I actually don't want it to cover the whole thing. I just want to give it a little bit of depth. And I'm just barely tapping the container as I'm doing this. It's almost like you're uh, adding some pepper to something you're about to eat. And that's, that's actually perfect right there. So before we put on the course, I like to always give a little, another application of hairspray between, between applications. So now we're gonna add our coarse turf. And for this, this stuff, if you try to sprinkle it from the container, you're just gonna get one big blob. So for this, I actually just use a spoon. And I'm just gonna very lightly shake this uh, coarse turf over the polyfiber and I'm actually looking for even a little less coverage with this than I had 
with the fine. That actually is exactly what I'm looking for right there. So again, we want to fix that down. You'll lose a little bit blowing away with the hairspray. But that's there and it is not going anywhere. So this last part I would actually do when it's on the layout, but since this is just a demonstration, I'll do it on the paper towel, but I'm gonna take my yellow and even more than, uh, than I did the burnt grass, I wanna have even less of this stuff because what I'm doing with this is trying to just add a little bit of highlight. And I would do this on the layout because it sort of catches the high spots and it sort of simulates a little bit of sunlight. And that's actually all I want. I don't want to turn it yellow. I just want to give it that little pop of highlight. And it's actually more effective when it's actually on the layout and it's actually uh, vertical because it'll it just catches it better when it falls that that way but you get the idea there so with that I would actually just lift it up it's a little sticky but it's you can handle it no problem get your fingers a little wet but that's it and then you can put this on the layout now as you can see from my fingers I mean it's it's wet and it's pretty sticky so I've found that actually there's enough there's enough uh, lacquer in that hairspray that when you put it on the layout, it actually holds, especially when you put other pieces around it and they sort of lock together. Now, I could come and pull it off the layout pretty easily with a pair of tweez tweezers or even my fingers, but um, that's not gonna happen. So I, I think it's actually strong enough just on its own. So there's one more little thing I like to add and that's a little fine leaf foliage. So let me show you how I make that. So this is what I make all of my undergrowth and trees from. Uh, this is a uh, super tree material from Scenic Express. And uh, what I start, if this is gonna be undergrowth or, or little small shrubs, which this is gonna be, um, I'll just start with just kind of a throwaway piece like this and basically follow the same process that I did before. I'm gonna coat it with hairspray and I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna come off camera a minute and do it over my garbage can because I do not want um, this little tray to be full of hairspray where I won't be able to reclaim the, the leaf material. So covered with hairspray and this is what I use for the leaves. It's uh, by Knock. Uh, Scenic Express also makes something I think is basically the exact same thing, but it's basically some sort of a paper product that's been finely chopped in little regular pieces. But boy, I tell you, it's the best stuff I've seen for making leaves. And unlike the, um, the turf before, this I actually want to go on really thick. Only thing I try to do is to avoid the branches as much as I can, the, the bigger parts, and strictly get it on the little ends. Kind of shake that off a little bit. And I'll, just like before, I'm gonna go off camera again, I'm gonna give it another little squirt. And then we'll give it one more, just to make sure we didn't miss anything. Trying to keep this on camera here for you, sorry. All right. Now, I am not gonna use it like this. I'm gonna cut off the little individual pieces and they'll be, let me get this out of the way here. I'll start basically separating the larger pieces. that and then take my tweezers and I'll probably decide like with this piece for example that that's still too big for a single one so I'll chop it off even further but there's a if I can get it focused there we go I mean that to me that's just incredible looking the leaves on that 
you cannot achieve that look with ground foam. It just it just has that spongy look where this really has the thin and pointy look of leaves or ivy. Um, that is hard to beat. So I would take the little clusters, move that out of the way. We'll bring this back in again. And then through my sculpt mode, I basically take a T-pin, make a hole, and then I would press this through there so that it gives a little bit of, of three dimension and a little alternate texture to the ground foam. But together, I mean, they each serve a purpose and together they actually, I think, make a very nice presentation. So let's go back up to the layout and we'll take a look at the structures that I built. And here is the first finished area of the town of Graves at the West End. And like I said, I had a little head start on this because this store, which is a South River Model Works, uh, part of one of their kits, uh, Streeters in Clearbrook, I think is the name of it. But this little uh, garage, car repair, and gas station store, general store building was part of that kit and one that I had built for Diorama. And I, I, it's one of my absolute favorite South River Model Works kits. And there was just no way I wasn't going to incorporate this on the layout, if at all possible. So uh, it did involve, as I said on an earlier vlog, cutting the Diorama. Um, there was actually some buildings on the original one that were here. And then there was... There's a feed mill that comes with the kit that sat perpendicular over here. So I basically used a jigsaw on the base of the diorama and cut those away. But all of these other buildings have been built basically in the in the week that followed the last vlog. So in the very back here is a BTS um, church. And then we have these three company houses and originally, I was just going to fill this back in over here with trees, um, very similar to this type of look. But, you know, the backdrop, especially in this corner here, just has such a nice look. It seemed like a shame to cover, to cover that up with trees. So I was thinking it would be nice to have some company houses back in that corner, but I didn't have any more kits. Well... As it turned out, I had three of these that were left from the old layout that never got used. Um, the very nice Rick's Maxwell Avenue homes. And I actually had three of these that had never, I think I'd used a couple of chimneys out of one or two of them, but they, the wall sections, everything were intact. So these three houses right here, let's see if I can get a little closer to them were actually built using those Rick's kits. And I'm gonna insert a picture right here so you can see how I actually cut down the original pitch of the end walls. So they, uh, they had a pretty high pitched roof, so I lowered that. And then to be able to combine the porch roof and main house roof into just one piece, I offset the peak of that wall so that I was able to basically score one end of the roof and bend it upwards to make the porch roof. So in other words, I didn't have to cut or fit anything. I was able to use them intact and just score and slightly bend up the, the roof to make the porch cover. Um, but other than that, the kit was pretty much built as is. Obviously, I left the brick porches off, but all of the uh, supports here were just made with some some plastic uh, plastruck material that I had. Um, it's, these were already styrene kits, so it just seemed like it was easier to continue to work with styrene to glue them together. The railings. The only thing that's actually wood on these are the staircases, and the staircases are from Micromark and they are wood. I am going to put a handrail on each side. Um, the ground cover was still wet the day that I thought about working on it, so I never completed it, but it it looks a little um, death-defying to go up and down those steep 
stairs, so I will be adding some handrails to each side. And then uh, you'll see one little detail I added was the clothesline in the back. That's as close as I can zoom on it. But to make that, I just used a piece of brass wire into a wood dowel for the pole. And the sheets are uh, aluminum foil that I painted white and bent over the wire. And then nice amount of aluminum foil, you can bend it to look like they're sort of uh, blowing in the breeze. Uh, but you'll see a lot of little tree stumps. I had those left over from the MANG. I can't even remember where I got those from, somebody on eBay. Um, but you'll see a lot of tree stumps through here, so it looks like they at least cut away a lot of the trees to fill in the, um, to make room for the buildings to be built. And there's, you know, some junk, some tires, people on the porches. But I think it really makes a nice scene here. And then you'll see I also did some of the upper hill. It's not completely finished, but um, not totally happy with the trees. There'll be some other things in front of it, some undergrowth to make it a little thicker looking at the top there. And I have not weathered the gravel road because as you can see, it's going to continue all the way down to where the truck dump's going to be. And um, I'm going to weather it all at the same time instead of trying to match it bit by bit. Um, this little area right here, by the way, there will also be another row of company houses going up the road that way. But yeah, I think it really looks much nicer than just a bunch of, uh, bunch of super trees in that corner. Now, if there's anything wrong with super trees, it's just, um, I'm a structure guy and as much as I can put structures on there and um, still look plausible for the area, that's definitely going to be the the way that I go. Um, let me see if I move the camera and we'll take a look at the front of that store. So here's the front of the store. I'm trying to, I'm having to reach in. I'm trying to balance the phone so hopefully it won't move around too much. But, um, you know, you have to really kind of lean in to appreciate all the detail on the front of this. Thank goodness I have pictures of it from when it was on the diorama, but um, you get the idea with the road going up the hill here. Actually, it kind of goes down in the back, but just a very, very nice kit. Sorry if it's a little dark. I can get a little more light on that. There's a little bit. But you can see a little more detail on the church there. But that's uh, that's where we are so far. Let's see if I can give you a little different angle on the houses there. There we go. But I love those mountains in the distance. I'm really this, you know. This I think the overall thing with the layout is I'm going to lean more on the backdrops to give a, a sense of mountains versus actual scenery and puffballs. And I'll have trees, but I'm really gonna let the backdrop be what gives the layout depth. Um, and I think so far it is achieving that goal. But yeah, once I got to here, you know, <laughs> Just covered up the backdrop almost completely in that little area. But that's okay. It, it gets a nice transition between the heavily forest, forested area and the more lived-in area. All right. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this, uh, this episode of the vlog. Uh, just to, to kind of give you a little preview of what's to come. So... My next project is going to be to go ahead and first get all of the cardboard webbing finished in this area right here. And once that's done, I'll probably now, since it's such a small area to do, go ahead and do all the plaster cloth 
down this whole stretch above the road, then do the sculpt mold, scenic it, finish it first, and then work my way down to here. So still planning on having a little truck dump. I kind of have something mocked up right there. But trucks would come off of this road, do a little gravel, little gravel area so they could back in and dump the coal to be conveyed up to that part of the building. So if I can get all of this done by Labor Day and I'll have a three day weekend coming up, um, I'll have a, uh, that'll be the subject of the next vlog is to have that filled in, but it's probably going to be a month or so before all of this lower area gets finished to match, but, um, it's coming along and hopefully you'll be back to check out my progress next time. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell to be updated on new content as it's uh, put on my YouTube channel. And we will look forward to seeing you guys next time. Stay healthy, everyone. Be safe. We'll see you soon.